That's our Nufi, who's the oldest. This is Donar, who's the scariest. This is Luna, who's the youngest and fastest. And that's the big boy. Hi there, how are you? Thanks for tuning in. These are all incredible tales from Dr. Paul. What's that squeaking in the background, birds? <laughs> The Netherlands is a socialistic country already when I was there. So college education in the South, there was no tuition. And because my parents were just farmers and didn't have a lot of money, that's how I got into vet school. So then we had to buy our own microscope and uh, those were expensive in those days. And my dad actually had to sell a cow in order to pay for this first microscope that I have. For me, it was a big deal because, you know, we didn't have that many cows. It was a mono, what do you call that, monocular? Not a binocular, it was a monocular. And it didn't have a light, it had a mirror. So yes, it was the basic, a basic microscope that would work. And I still have it. I don't think I'll ever get rid of that. What else? More tales. What changes have you seen in Michigan? Get in the lake. So where are we next? So yeah, Diane and I have been here in this place in Wapen now for the last 40 years. And it's amazing how things have changed. When we started here, I was 80% dairy. Beef cows, dairy cows, some horses. There were at least three or four farms every mile. Every herd was probably 50, 60 cows. So yes, we did tremendous amount of work with cows. And there were days that we had like 30 farm calls. But it means uh, you went here and you could go to the neighbor. Or even a mile down the road was the next one. So you didn't have to drive that far. All these family farms are gone. Now we drive 20, 25 miles sometimes between farm calls, which in those days, 40 years ago, was unheard of. We see a tremendous amount of people now trucking their animals to the clinic in a trailer. Like Charlie, the therapy horse, he comes from almost two hours away. The camels that you've seen come from three hours away. But there's nothing we can do. Things happen, and we just have to accept it and change and go with the times. Still love the area, still want to stay here, and still want to practice. And that was a long story. So let's get the next one. Free time? What is free time? That's a four-letter word, twice. Anyway, free time whenever we are here and with the days off, thank goodness, you have to unwind sometime. What we do here, I work and yes, we have lawn to do and house to keep up and all that stuff. So yes, you never get done because there's always a little bit more and a little bit here and something there. And other times, you know, for free time, Diane and I love to travel and we like to go see places, other cultures. Uh, we've been to many islands in the Caribbean. We've been to Mexico in several places. Love it there. And of course, you know, we've been so many times to Canada, it's unbelievable. And of course, we go back to the Netherlands every so often to see all the relatives there. <laughs> uh, I'm a rock hound. And if I can carry it, I'll pick it up. Rocks, in a way, are beautiful. Uh, when I drive along the road and I see something, I will pick up a rock and take it home. And when you look at the house, there is a chimney outside. Every rock in that chimney came from this area. Okay. You know, if I if I start talking with my hands, you never know what story comes out, especially this one, because I have eyes in these fingers. Have a good night. Thank you so much. I'm out of stories now. Have a good night. That's the one I wanted. <laughs>